Hey everyone, today I am going to show how to install Flutter in your Windows computer. To get started, go to flutter.dev website. Once you are there, click on the get started button. Click on the Windows logo to get to the Windows installation instructions. These are some of the minimum system requirements you will need to install Flutter on your computer. You will need Windows 7 or later versions of Windows OS. As for disk space, you will need 1.64 GB, but it does not include space for IDE and other tools. So practically you will need about 5 to 10 GB of space to create Flutter apps. Also Flutter depends on having these two tools installed on your computer, Windows PowerShell and Git for Windows. PowerShell is pre-installed with Windows 10. If you are using a older version of Windows, you can download PowerShell from this link. If you don't want to install PowerShell, you can use Windows command prompt, which is pre-installed on every version of Windows. As for Git, you will need version 2 or later. If you already have Git installed, make sure you can run Git commands from the command prompt or PowerShell. I don't have Git installed, so I am going to download it. I am downloading 64 bit version setup file. If you are using 32 bit version of Windows, make sure to download 32 bit version setup file. Next step is downloading the SDK files. The SDK file contains Dart SDK, Flutter command line tools, and all the necessary code you need to create Flutter apps. Click on this blue button to start the download. We have to get one more file as well, which is Android Studio. Android Studio serves two purposes. First, you can use it as a code editor. Second, it provides Android SDK, Android SDK command line tools and Android SDK build tools, which are required by Flutter for developing Android apps. Go to Android Studio website and download Android Studio. Once all three downloads are completed, we can proceed to installing them. Let's go ahead and open your downloads folder. I'm going to install git first. In the git installation wizard, for most options, I'm going to keep default settings. In this dialog, choose the second option. This will override new git repository's default branch name to main instead of master. Use recommended default settings for all the other options and finish the installation. Once installation is completed, we can check to see if it installed correctly by running git version command. Open PowerShell and type git dash dash version, then enter. You will see the git version you just installed. Next, let's install the Flutter SDK files. I am using WinRAR to extract the SDK zip file. If you don't have WinRAR, you can use any archiver program that you might have on your computer. Flutter recommends placing the SDK files in a folder that is directly in C drive. Also, it's important that you do not place the SDK files inside program files or your user folder that requires elevated privileges. So following the Flutter guidelines, I'm going to place the SDK files in C drive in a directory called SRC. Once the extraction is completed, let's go ahead and see the files that we just extracted. Inside the SRC folder, there will be a folder called Flutter. This folder contains all the Flutter SDK files. In order to run Flutter commands on Windows console, we need to add Flutter to Windows path environment variables. To add Flutter to the path, open start and type env. In the search results, you will see 8 system environment variables. Click on it to open. Click on environment variables. Select 
path in user variables and click on edit. Here we will add Flutter's location as a new environment variable. Go to your Flutter SDK folder, then open bin folder and copy the location name. Then come back to environment variable settings. Click on the new button, then paste Flutter bin folder location. Once that is done, click OK. Now to check if the path is working, open PowerShell. In PowerShell, type Flutter and hit enter. You will see a welcome to Flutter message. Now that we have added Flutter to the path, we can run Flutter commands from anywhere on our Windows PC. Let's move on to the next step. Flutter provides a helpful command called Flutter Doctor. When you run this command, it will scan your computer for Flutter installation and displays a report of the status of your installation. Go to PowerShell, type the command Flutter Doctor and hit enter. It will take few seconds for the scan to complete. In the report, we can see that Flutter Doctor found two issues. Unable to locate Android SDK and Android Studio not installed. To fix this issue, we have to install Android Studio. So open your downloads folder, then open Android Studio setup file to start installing Android Studio. I am installing Android Studio with default options. Once the installation is completed, click finish. It will automatically launch Android Studio. Click OK on the Import Settings dialog box. Once it's loaded, you will see Android Studio Setup Wizard. Click Next to proceed to the next page. Here you can select the type of setup you want. Standard Setup will install Android Studio with most common settings and options. And in Custom Install, we can customize installation settings and components that are being installed. Select Custom Install and click Next. Keep Java Development Location to Default and click Next. Select the UE theme you prefer. On Component Setup page, keep the default selections. Android Studio will download the SDK files to this location. If you want, you can change it to different location. Select the amount of RAM you like to allocate for Android emulator. For my computer, the recommended size is 2 GB. It may differ for your computer based on your system configuration. So choose recommended size and hit next. Now we are at the final step. Android Studio will download all these components and install them on your computer. Click on the finish button to start downloading all the components. Wait for all the components to finish download. It will take some time. If you see any prompt like this, click yes. Alright, all the components are downloaded. Also, Android Studio has set up a new virtual device as well. Click on the finish button. Now that we have installed Android Studio and its components, let's run Flutter Doctor command once again to see if there are any issues. Flutter Doctor have found one issue. It says that Android license not accepted. It also has the command that we need to run to fix the issue. So let's run the command flutter doctor dash dash android dash licenses. It says that 7 out of 7 license is not accepted. To review the licenses, type Y and hit enter on your keyboard. It will display all licenses in text format. Let's go ahead and accept all the licenses. Now, if we run Flutter Doctor command again, hopefully we will get no issues found message. Alright, uh, we are almost done with the Flutter setup. Let's move on to setting up our code editor. Open Injections page and scroll down to the bottom of that page. Click on the Setup Editor link. 
Flutter recommends these three correlators for creating Flutter applications. I prefer to use Visual Studio Code because it is fast and it has clean interface. Open VS Code download link in a new tab. Click on that blue button to start downloading VS Code. Once download is completed, let's go ahead and install VS Code. Open VS Code setup file, accept the license agreement and click next. I'm going to keep the installation directly as it is. Keep the default option for this one too and continue to next step. In these options, make sure add to path is selected. I'm also selecting register code as a default editor for supported files. Once the installation is completed, click on the finish button. This will automatically launch VS Code. First, we need to install Flutter and Dart extensions. On VS Code, click on the extension button and type Flutter in the extension search field. Select Flutter in the search results, then click on the install button. This will also install the dot extension as well. To see if dot is installed, search for dot in the extension search field. As you can see, dot is installed. Alright, now we are ready to create Flutter application. In VS Code, press Ctrl Shift P on your keyboard. This will open VS Code's common palette. In the common palette, type Flutter. In the search results, you will see Flutter new application project. Click on it, then select a location to save the project. I am going to select my documents folder. Next, we need to enter a name for our project. I am going to give the name Flutter demo for my project. After adding the project name, press enter on your keyboard to proceed to the next step. The Flutter extension will create our new project with a pre-built demo app. At the right side bottom, you might see a notification like this. Select Yes. This will add some VS Code settings for a better experience editing Flutter code. Since we already have a pre-built Flutter app, we can run the app on a virtual device to preview it. On VS Code bottom right side, you will see the default device that Flutter is selected to run the app. We can change the device by clicking on the device name. Once you click on the device name, VS Code will display list of devices that are available. Since I like to preview the app on your mobile device, I'm going to choose Pixel 3a. The Pixel 3a Android emulator was created when we installed Android Studio. Clicking on the device name will set it as a default device and launch the Android emulator. It may take few seconds for the emulator to load. While it's running, I'm just placing it at the right side. I am going to place VS Code and emulator side by side. Once the emulator is loaded, we can preview the app. On VS Code menu, go to run and select start debugging. You can also use the keyboard shortcut F5. Once debugging is started, you can see that VS Code is running task called cradle task assemble debug. When trying to debug an Android app for the first time, the cradle task process will take some time to complete. It might take like 10 to 15 minutes. The Cradle task will convert project source files into a single APK file and then install the APK file to the virtual device. So when running for the first time, it will download some build tools that are necessary to create an APK file. Once the build process is completed, you will be able to see the app in the Android emulator. Here we have our Flutter demo app. You can interact with the app like you can do on a real Android device. Flutter offers a tool called Hot Reload. When you make changes to the source code and save the file, you can see the changes instantly on the virtual device. To demonstrate Hot Reload, I'm going to change the primary swatch color from blue to red. Once I save the file, the app reloads and displays the changes instantly. This Android emulator was created by Android Studio when we installed it. It runs on Android version 11. If you want to test your app on a different Android version or if you want to 
test on device like a tablet or watch, you can create a new Android emulator. To create a new Android emulator, open Android Studio. On Android Studio welcome screen, go to Configure and select AVD Manager. Android Device Manager will display the list of devices that are available. Right now, I have only one device which is Pixel 3a. To create a new virtual device, click on the Create Virtual Device button. You can select a mobile device from this list of mobile devices. Clicking the tablet button at the left side will display the list of tablet devices. Likewise for other Android devices. I am going to use Pixel 4XL for my emulator. After selecting the device profile, click next to continue. Then select the Android OS version you like to use. I am going to use Android version R. If you like to use different Android version, you can download by clicking on the download link. Once OS version is selected, click next to proceed to the next step. At the verify configuration screen, choose graphics settings from automatic to hardware. This will use your computer's graphic card to render Android emulator screen. So you will get good performance. You can also customize few other settings. Click on the show advanced settings button. You can set Android emulator boot type to cold boot or quick boot. Increase or decrease RAM size. Also you can increase or decrease SD card size. If you don't want to use SD card, you can select the no SD card option. Once you verified all the settings, click finish. Alright, now we have our second emulator ready to use. You can launch the emulator by clicking on this play button. If you want to delete an emulator, click on the down arrow icon and select delete. Let's delete this Pixel 3a device. Since it's running, we need to close it. Then click on the arrow icon and select delete. I'm going to launch the emulator from VS Code. So let's close the device manager. Since no emulator is running, VS Code selected Chrome as a default device. Click on the device name and choose Pixel 4XL from the available devices. Once the emulator is loaded, click on the run and debug button to preview the demo app on the new virtual device. Since Flutter 2 supports web, let's see how the app looks on your browser. After closing the Android emulator, Chrome will be set as the default device. On VS Code, you can run multiple devices and preview your Flutter app on all devices at once. I will show how to do that on another tutorial. Clicking on the run and debug button will launch Chrome and display the app as a web page. You can make changes to the source code and see the changes immediately on Chrome too. I hope this video was helpful for you. For more videos like this, click like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.